John Lee often made the point that when you're sitting here focused on your breath, you've got all four frames of reference for the establishing of mindfulness. The breath is the body. The feelings of ease or dis-ease associated with the breath are feelings. The quality of your mind, of course, relates to mind. And the good qualities and bad qualities that are going through the mind relate to dhammas. Now, because the 16 steps of breath meditation are divided into four tetrads, and each tetrad is associated with one of those frames of reference, the same point applies with those 16 steps. In other words, you can look at what you're doing right now in terms of any of the tetrads and choose whichever one is most helpful for what you're dealing with, because you're working on them all together at the same time. In terms of the body, the Buddha says, be aware of the breath to see whether it's long or short, and you can expand that to other qualities of the breath, whether it's heavy or light, fast or slow, deep or shallow. And then he says, try to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in and breathe out, and then try to calm bodily fabrication. Now the pattern he's establishing here, and it's one that he carries through each of the tetrads, is you first try to get sensitive to this particular aspect of your awareness and learn how to manipulate it. And then realize that the best way to manipulate it is to calm it down. And that relates directly to his teachings on tranquility and insight. Tranquility is getting things calm, and insight is seeing things in terms of fabrication. So you're working on both qualities at the same time. With feelings, he says, start out by trying to be aware of pleasure and rapture as you breathe in and breathe out. And then become sensitive to what he calls metal fabrication and the feelings and perceptions, and to see how they have an impact on the mind. Some ways of perceiving the breath are going to be calming, other ways of perceiving the breath are going to be more stimulating. And a lot of times it's going to depend on what you need right now. But eventually, as he says, you want to calm those things down. What kind of perceptions, what kind of feelings are most calming for the mind? You try to take your practice in that direction. Now this, of course, is not the case that you have feelings floating off in some realm of reality separated from the breath. They're very closely connected to how you're breathing. How can you breathe to give rise to pleasure? How do you breathe to give rise to a rapture? What ways of creating feelings through the breath, or what kind of perceptions of the breath are you employing right now? Are they helpful to get the mind to settle down, or are they not? And what can you do to make them more helpful? So these are simply two different aspects of one process. Bringing in the mind as the third tetrad adds another dimension. You start out by simply being aware of the state of your mind as you breathe in, breathe out, and then you notice does it need to be gladdened? Okay, what can you do to energize it? This will again relate directly to the way you're breathing, or the perceptions and feelings you're focusing on, by the perceptions using the breath and the feelings created by the breath that you're creating right now. What impact do they have on the mind? What can stimulate the mind, gladden the mind, as the Buddha says? Which ones make it more steady? And there's anything in there that's unskillful, how do you release it? How do you release the mind? Now this is going to apply to many different levels of the practice. You can release it from your lust, you can release it from your anger, you can release it from your laziness, you can release it from all kinds of unskillful things just to get it in concentration. Then once you've got it in concentration, then you want to look more carefully. What things are you still holding on to? Now, some of the things you're holding on to right now, you're going to need to hold on to because otherwise you just float away from the breath. So you've got to make a distinction what things are necessary right now and which things are you holding on to that are superfluous. 
begin on the basic process is this. Sensitize yourself to this aspect of your awareness, and then figure out what you can do to use your awareness of how you fabricate these things to calm them down. The fourth tetrad deals with Thomas. It starts out with inconstancy. You breathe in and out, aware of inconstancy. And you go through dispassion, cessation, relinquishment. Now here again, this can function on many different levels. To begin with, you've got to clear out all your distractions, what the Buddha calls your sense of greed and distress with reference to the world. Your sense of yourself in the world and what you want out of the world, and whether you're satisfied or dissatisfied with the world. All these things are going to come barging in on your meditation if you're not careful. So it's good for us to see that whatever it is that you're attracted to, it's not going to last. Whatever issues you have are going to be very small in terms of the long course of time. Look at the pleasure you might get out of thinking about these things. That's pretty inconstant, too. Try to use this insight. And from inconstancy it goes to stress, and from stress it goes to not-self. If something is inconstant and stressful, do you want to latch on to it? Do you want to claim it as yours? And once you realize you don't, okay, that's when you develop this passion for it. And you begin to realize that you are the one who's creating this particular fabrication because of your passion. And once there's a dispassion, it stops. And you'd be amazed at how many things you really are creating in your awareness. Then you give the whole thing up. Even the insight that said, ah, yes, I understand this. You have to give that up, too. Otherwise, you sit here for the next rest of the hour just smiling to yourself about how clever you are, and then you miss everything else that's going on in the meditation. So you gain this insight, and you say, oh my gosh, but holding on to that, let it go. In each case, it's a very basic kind of process, sensitizing yourself to the extent to which you're fabricating things, trying to calm that down, and ultimately get to the point that if it's an unskillful fabrication, you just let it go. And then further on in the practice, you start letting go of even more skillful fabrications. Where it gets complicated is the fact that a lot of things going on in the mind are things that you might not expect, the insights you're going to gain. You can't plan them out ahead of time. Today we're going to gain insight into stress, tomorrow we're going to gain insight into not-self. It doesn't work that way. You have to gain insight into particulars of your attachments. Say there's a distraction going on in the mind. What's keeping you with the distraction? What decision did the mind make? I want to go for that. All too often we don't see that. We find ourselves in the midst of the distraction without questioning, well, what is the voice that made the decision to go here? Who is that? What purpose does it have? How wise is it? What perceptions underlie that? The Johns keep stressing again and again, it's your perceptions, it's the labels you put on things, are really the culprits here. They can take anything and dress it up in any shape at all to make it attractive, make it interesting, make it worth getting worked up about. And then they can disguise it from you. They can disguise themselves from you. So you want to be able to see through those disguises. This is where it gets complicated. And the basic process is the same. It's pretty simple. You see the fact that you're fabricating unnecessary stress, and once you see that it's unnecessary, it's weighing you down, you stop. But the ways in which you're fabricating those things, those are pretty complicated, which is why you have to get the mind really quiet, as quiet as you can, and yet alert, so you can detect these subtle movements in the mind. So as you're sitting here focused on the breath, these are the four areas that you can pay attention to. You find the mind's not settling down. Okay, why? What's the problem? How's the breath? Does the breath feel good? If not, we can work on that. 
How do you know whether it's good or not? Try to get your awareness that fills the whole body so you can have a sense of the breath energies everywhere in the body. How do you breathe in a way that gives rise to that sense of ease, pleasure, rapture? At what point does rapture become a little bit too oppressive? How's your state of mind right now? Is your energy up? Is it down? Are you holding on to anything that you need to let go of? And notice when the Buddha is talking about letting go, he's got that image of the fire in mind. The belief in those days was that when fire burns, it clings to its fuel. And in clinging to its fuel, it's trapped. In other words, the fuel is not holding on to the fire, it's the fire holding on to the fuel. It's only when the fire lets go that it's freed from the fuel. In the same way with the mind. The things that are trapping you right now, they don't have their clutches on you. You have your clutches on them. And when you want to look for why, what is it in the mind that perceives these things as worth holding on to? As for dhammas, whatever is distracting you right now, learn to analyze it in terms of it's being inconstant or stressful, not self. So realize you don't want to get involved. And when you're not involved with it, it goes away. So keep this basic pattern in mind and keep this sense of the four areas where you can be paying attention. Because that'll see you through far. Simply that things get more precise, more detailed, sometimes more counterintuitive. But by getting your mind really still and learning how to use this understanding of fabrication that can come with each of these four areas, you get it still enough to see whatever fabrications you didn't expect were there. That's how you work yourself free.